Arkady Petrov, Creation of the Universe, Book One, Save Yourself, page 208. They were laughing at him. For them, he was only a carcass hanging on the cross. There was a grimace of revulsion on some faces. Yeshua gasped frantically and forced himself to come up from the bottom of tormenting drowsiness. With an effort of will, he awakened within him the sacred energy of a power lying dormant in his tailbone, and twisting it like a tornado around the vertebrae, he threw it up the spine toward his head, down the chest and stomach, and then up again. The ripples of energy began to grow in him, and in an agonizing struggle, with his inability to pronounce words, his bloodless gray lips clearly uttered, It will be fulfilled. The silence that ensued seemed like a prayer. The short uttering, delivered amidst the scorching heat on the bald mountain, was either sacrilege or a prophecy. The city of Jerusalem lay nearby, and all eyes turned instinctively toward the impressive temple of white marble, its gilded roof, glistening in the sun. It represented greatness and sanctity. Blasphemer! He is persisting even on the cross, sounded indignant voices. He should be stoned. Yeshua forced himself to forget about the crowd and stay focused. With a short impulse, he sent a wave of heat through his body, following it as it flowed along the back towards his numb limbs, overcoming the numbness of approaching oblivion. He moved his fingers, which he could not bend from the pain, and with an effort of will, he removed himself from the stench of death. Silence, filled with pain and tension, was now all around him. Seeing that despite all the opportunities of expression being taken away from it, life was visibly returning to the barely breathing body on the cross, even those who were cursing him fell silent. A vague smile touched the lips of the one who was crucified, and then his face froze in grim anticipation. His eyes suddenly became unnaturally dark like two clusters of night. His veins grew swollen from the exertion. He was biting his lips, as though the external pain could eliminate the other, internal one, or at least keep it under control. The bites of horseflies made the pus of mucus ooze from his skin and drip down his cheeks. This distracted him, and he was still unable to attain the needed concentration of strength. Nevertheless, something had changed all around. A sudden gust of wind threw dust at the people standing next to the cross. Yeshua had to focus on the roof of the Jerusalem temple glittering with gold. The plan that was conceived in advance came into effect, and with relentless divine will it was approaching the climax of a miracle without which no great mission could begin. He strained his vision to the maximum. Yeshua saw a stream of light descend on the Jerusalem temple, the bridge between the external and inner world across which he could influence the cosmic powers of nature was established. The great elements of eternity were ready to respond to the minutest impulse from his will. He directed all of his mental strength toward outlining his desire. Another gust of wind hit the bald mountain, and its force was becoming more and more tangible. The gathered crowd began to look worriedly around, unable to understand what caused the sudden surge of bad weather. Only the one crucified with the inscription King of the Jews over his head seemed to have recovered his former strength. His eyes glowed with fierce concentration and were fastened to the roof of the Temple of Jerusalem. A high hissing sound filled the surrounding space and turned into the rumbling of an approaching storm, as if intensified by the effort of his will. With all their power, the elements struck the crucified man, knocking the air from his lungs, but he still managed to wheeze the following toward a handful of people covering their heads with their garb. It will be fulfilled. His voice, hoarse, gurgling deep inside his chest, reached those standing by the cross. However, none of them shot up their hands in a passionate blessing. Ripples of energy began to grow inside him, and Yeshua once more focused his gaze on the roof of the temple. Storm clouds began to gather over the mountains and the city, and the fiery sword of lightning suddenly cut through the swirling darkness. The people screamed and took off in fear. Only the guards and soldiers, pulling their cloaks over their heads, stayed at their post, loyal to the orders. 
the swirling black clouds with the fierce rumble of elemental power already formed in the sky, and a thunderstorm broke out in full force. The wind ripped out the trees in the mountains, pushing out the sunlight and throwing mud at it. The skies parted, and rain poured down on the city of Jerusalem with such fury as if it was the beginning of the second biblical flood. All plunged into the chaos of the storm. The downpour fell on the hill with the three crosses on top. It seemed as though the sky wanted to punish the earth, flogging it with the powerful whips of rain for the evil perpetrated that day on the mountain called the Golgotha, which means the Skull Mountain. The earth refused to accept the pouring rain, and it rushed in heavy streams down to the city, which was attacked by ever-growing gusts of wind. It will be fulfilled. The one crucified wheezed through his clenched teeth, and his voice rang clear through the howling wind and the roaring of the storm. A shadow broke away from the storm and struggling with the wind, obscuring the temple roof. But Yesha was so focused on controlling the events which took place and so preoccupied with the realization of his dream that he failed to notice what just happened. At that moment, one of the soldiers came up to him, overcoming the resistance of the wind. The tip of his spear rose, taking aim at the heart of the crucified man, and tearing through his flesh, the iron tip plunged between his ribs. You should thank the procurator was the last thing he heard.